Our final session is going to take information that we've created using the AP Vendor and AP Open Invoice tables to create a pivot table that's going to simulate an aging report. We've got all the pieces of information we need to create a relatively simple aging report in Excel. And now we're going to use Excel's pivot table capabilities to do that. As we have any cell in our table highlighted, we can go in Excel to the Insert tab, click on Pivot Table. Excel would aut will automatically pull over all of the information needed for a report. We're going to hit OK. Now we're going to need to start placing different fields in our report in the right place. So I'm going to pull over the vendor name and I'm going to put it as a row label. And as I'm dropping my fields in its place, you'll see how they get populated on our report. I'm also interested in bringing over the invoice number. I'm also interested in bringing over the invoice date. I'm going to go ahead and bring in the balance. Now my balance is going to go in the values area. Okay. And finally my aging categories, I'm going to pull that over as column labels. Okay, so I have so far the beginnings of an aging report looks a little bit kind of murky. We're going to start cleaning it up. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my indentations much cleaner because what Excel wants to do with a pivot table is every time it sees a value it's essentially dropping it in a hierarchy. So what we can do is at the lowest level of our hierarchy, the invoice date, we're going to click and highlight field settings. And we're going to say that for invoice date we don't need a subtotal. And when we go to layout and print, we're going to show the items in a tabular form. What that's going to do, it's going to change our hierarchy to look more in a columnar fashion. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. I'm going to do the same thing with invoice number. We're going to go to field settings. We're going to say none. We're going to go to layout and print. We're going to show items in tabular form. You'll notice now we have one indentation with our vendor name to our invoice number, but now the invoice number and the invoice date is more columnar. We can do the same thing with the vendor name, although this time I am going to keep a subtotal. However, I am going to make this column appear in a tabular form. Okay, so you can see how I have my vendor amounts still in place for my vendors. A couple of other things that we're going to do. You'll notice that my tabs are not necessarily in order. We've got a current column over 120. This over 120 really should be moved at the end. So I'm going to click and highlight and I'm just going to move this column into place. A couple of more things. I'm going to add some formatting. So we're going to go to the balance field setting. We're going to go to our number format. We're going to make it a number. We're going to use a thousand separator and we'll leave the decimals. Now you'll notice we have some invoices with a zero balance. That's because our open invoice table 
brought over records with essentially zero balances. We could have removed that at the time of our database query, but we can also remove it in our pivot table. We can bring over the balance field to our report filter, and we can say, I only want you to report invoices whose balance does not equal zero. And it's as easy as going in and unchecking the zero. And you can see now we've removed effectively the zero balance invoices from our report. At the same time, we've now made our report essentially omit the over 60 and over 90 days because there aren't any invoices that fall within those two categories. If we still want to show those two categories, all we have to do is go into the column label, go into field settings, go into layout and print, and show items with no data. And you're going to see that they now are restored even though there aren't any invoices that fall within those two categories. So we've now gone through essentially creating a database query, pulling information from Mass directly into Excel. We also performed a relatively complex, and when I say complex, bringing two or more tables from Mass into Excel into a database query. We've used some formulas that help us to create a pivot table using information that's not normally stored in mass. And then finally we've created a pivot table taking that table of information. And again, this pivot table can now be refreshed at any time by just clicking on the refresh button. Information for mass can be refreshed at any time by right clicking and hitting the refresh button. This is now an Excel document and I'm gonna save it and we're gonna call this my AP aging report and the next time I open up this report I refresh it it's now ready to run.